So your favorite program on television, guests of the week, the program that brings to you some, a lot of issues. We bring to you the guests that say it the way it is. And today, it's not going to be different. I am Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kadiri saying welcome. Today, we have a guest, somebody that you can, if you say an accomplished politician, you might be right. But of course, in our climb, we have an accomplished politicians. Politicians don't like to be called accomplished. But then, if there is one person you can call that, our guest today is one. He is no less a person than Engineer Ahmed Yusuf. Engineer Ahmed Yusuf was former special advisor in Taraba State Government. He was a two-time commissioner. He was commissioner of uh, finance and later commissioner of works. After that, he became the chairman, Taraba Investment and Property Limited. After then, he became the chief of staff. I mean, what more can you ask of? Then, after then, he became the gubernatorial aspirant of the ACN in 20, 2007. And after then, he also became the gubernatorial candidate again in 2011 of the CPC. So today, we shall be looking at so many issues. But of course, Taraba politics might be one of it. So I have the pleasure of welcoming to our studios Engineer Ahmed Yusuf. Engineer. Thank you. You're welcome to our studios. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, Engineer, it's been 18 years of uninterrupted uh, democracy in Nigeria. We've never had that since Nigeria's uh, independence. Incidentally, just about a few days, which it shall be October 1st. Yes. Uh, can you say we are there or we are on the way to be there? Uh, definitely we are on the way to be there, okay. to be precise. Mm. I can safely say so far so good, okay. the journey so far. Mm. Looking at uh, the past 18 years, uh, the ups and downs, we should be expected in a democracy, mm. especially a fledgling one like ours, and compared to other democracies the world over, especially if you, are, if you want to compare us with the United States in particular, which uh, has been, they have been practicing democracy for the past 200 years, dating back to their independence in 1776. So in comparative terms, uh, 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 we can confidently say we are on track. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, there may be hiccups here and there, but it should be expect expected in, in the polity anywhere. Mm -hmm. So you don't expect to have a perfect situation. So uh, on the whole, I, I think uh, there is... Uh, with, uh, with a sense of optimism, I will say that we're on track and I think the future is also very bright. All right. Well, I mean, talking about our political development, because even the United States will tell you that, I mean, they are work in progress, <laughs> yeah, that they are not there yet, yeah. and they hope to be there someday. One of the criticisms against most of you politicians is the issue of, I mean, moving from one political party to the other. Do you think that is healthy for democracy? Ah, uh, yes. It's not that healthy. Okay. But uh, again, we'll get back, we'll come back, to, still getting back to the issue of uh, the, uh, how old we are mm. in practicing the system. Mm. Ordinarily, one would have thought by now our parties would have been cut according to clear lines ideologically. Ideology. Okay. But uh, if you look at uh, what is obtained now on ground, mm. Uh, all these parties are a conglomeration of strange bedfellows, so to say. So you cannot safely identify a particular political party and say, yes, this is a socialist party okay. or a capitalist party or uh, lefties or righties or however you look at it. You find out the key players in all these political parties are the same people. They are the same people that have been migrating from mm. one political party to the other, going back and forth. Mm. So uh, 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 we still, in, 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 in terms of uh, having a clear-cut ideology, I think we are not yet there, yeah. and uh, we are far from uh, being there. But I, I think over the, I mean, over time we will be able to to perfect it, and uh, and by the time we stabilize, we are able to consolidate the gains of the gains so far. Then maybe in the future we will talk in clear terms of saying yes. Mr. A is, uh, I mean, this party is uh, leftist party, this party is uh, maybe center of right, all these terminologies that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But for now, I think it's just an amorphous <laughs> arrangement where uh, anything goes. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, most times the electorate will accuse you politicians 
of actually not staying in a political party because of ideology, that you move where you might find a situation to line your pocket. <laughs> what would you say about well, that? Well, I, I, I don't think it is always correct. Okay. Yeah, there are exceptions in all these situations. Okay. Um, uh, there are a lot of factors that compel maybe a particular politician to move, to to move to, uh, from one uh, party to another p party. Okay. One, absence of internal democracy. Is, is is there. Mm -hmm. Then maybe personal reasons other than internal democracy or having to move with a group. You know, uh, uh, politics, there are a lot of groupings. Even in a political, within a political party, you mm -hmm. find uh, groupings with a particular interest. And why your interest is not served or why your interest is like denied or you are, you are, uh, there is a tendency that you will be aged out. The tendency is, is just a, a survivalist thing. You, you know, you now say, okay, let's go elsewhere and see how we can uh, ventilate our political, I mean, uh, aspirations mm. in such a manner that it will facilitate whatever that you want to achieve mm. politically. Mm. So that is, uh, these are some of the factors that that compel or uh, yeah compel politicians to be to moving from one. from one party. Today they are in this party, the next day they are in another party. But I don't think it is, it is it that bad. I'm not trying to be selfish because uh, I have also moved camps uh, several times, mm -hmm. looking at uh, my participation in politics dating back to to the days of the SDP. Mm -hmm. Although there was relative stability then yes, uh, compared to what we have because now, we just have two we, political we, of parties. Of course, then. yes, yes, mm -hmm. we were like straight jacketed into, into the, uh, belonging to, to NRC or, <laughs> NRC SDP. or SDP. Yeah. You know, it was like a controlled democracy sort of. Mm -hmm. But now that it is like an all commerce thing, mm -hmm. uh, then that's why you find people migrating <laughs> across the board. Uh, but I think by the time we stabilize, we'll have less of these uh, movements. movements. All right. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean, if you people will talk about the politicians that have seen it all, uh, you might be one of them. I mean, starting from where you started to where you are today. Um, up till today, we're still hearing about is the turn of the Yorubas, is the turn of the Igbos, is the turn of the House of Olajis to, 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 to produce the president. Shouldn't we have gone past that stage by now? Uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, Why do you I'm think going, so? Yes, because you have to look at the Nigerian nation itself. Okay. It's a conglomeration of a lot of divergent views and opinions. Mm. Upon that also you have uh, several ethnic nationalities okay. and also uh, other factors. All these factors, by the time you, you put them in place, it will necessitate a situation where by now, or as of now, we have to make do with the current arrangement of uh, rotating, zoning positions until such a time that we stabilize. And uh, that is my opinion anyway. Okay. I, I believe we still need to be zoning these offices, um, these positions. And uh, looking at our constitution, uh, it is also there, and also the constitution of various political parties. Uh, to, to to give all all uh, I mean all parts of the country different parts of the country a sense of belonging, or else uh, if you if a particular uh, region or zone will monopolize all the offices, it will not be healthy for the general polity, and it will bring it will overheat the system in such a way that there is going to be general unrest. Mm. But what, 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 what engineer, what will you say? People who say some of these agitations come. Uh, as a result of uh, misgovernance, that if you're going to have good governance, local government, state level, that we can actually take care of this. Don't you think that can take care uh, of it? Well, I, again, I, I think I, I, I beg to disagree okay. in the sense that even if you have a very good st structure in place, mm. good governance, everything is moving well. Looking at the Nigerian situation, you will still have, you will still get people agitating for. Uh, also wanting to participate. Let me give you an example. Assuming uh, maybe today we say, ah, the Yorubas, they are running the country very well. It's okay, there's no problem. Let them, let's allow them to run the country. Everything is moving. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are enjoying uh, political stability. The economy is working very well. All sectors are working. Everything is fine. And we don't want to destabilize anything. We now say, okay, let's allow them to, to continue uh, with governance, uh, definitely uh, uh, some uh, people, they, you, you, are, you are bound to have agitations from other parts of the country to say, are you the only 
people that can can give us good governance. So I, I think we have to look at the the heterogeneous nature okay. of the country. country. It doesn't allow mm. this monopoly we are talking about. Ordinarily, all things being equal, but. Uh, I think it's not. We have not yet reached that stage that will say yes. Uh, we, we we have relative stability to the extent that uh, we can uh, do away with zoning arrangement okay. or any other thing to do with uh, giving all parts of the country sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. You have to take into consideration various interest groups various agitations, sentiments, emotions here and there. Mm -hmm. All these things must be taken into consideration with a view to uh, giving Nigerians a sense of belonging. And the only sense of belonging is to make sure that power is rotated in such a way that all parts will participate and contribute their own quota towards the meaningful development of uh, our uh, country. Uh, uh, all right, engineer, I mean, let's scale it down gradually. Before now, people will say the North is afraid of restructuring. The North is afraid of restructuring. We've seen the South-South talking about resource control. Uh, we've seen yeah. the Southeast talking about uh, confederation. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen the Southwest talking about returning back to regionalism. Yes. Then, of course, uh, then everybody will say the North is afraid. But now we see the North coming out to say we are ready for restructuring. <laughs> uh, do you think we should be talking about restructuring at this point? Yes, it looks like uh, whether we like it or not, mm -hmm. Restructuring is what is trending now, so to say, in, in the country at the moment. And uh, uh, from my perspective as, a, as an engineer, if you say restructuring, if you ask me to restructure a thing, because it's more, I, I, I like the word because it's more to do with engineering, engineering in okay. a way. Hmm. Uh, when you say restructuring is that you are talking about a structure that is not that healthy, okay. it's not that uh, like... Um, in good state, and you you look at the structure and rework it. And rework it. Okay. How do you rework the structure? You have what we call structural elements. You have the foundation, beams, columns, and slabs, and things like mm -hmm. that that make up a, 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 any given structure. Okay. So you have to fortify that structure in such a manner that you you reinvigorate it, you re-energize, or you refurbish, or you renew. Okay. So the same analogy goes to our polity. If we believe uh, restructuring is the way out, and uh, you know it's just a matter of semantics. Mm -hmm. Before we were talking about resource control, now we are talking about restructuring people. It's just we are just playing with mm -hmm. with words. Right. The, the the only thing is, let's look at the federation. Are we happy? with the composition okay. of the Federation as it is now. Mm. Are we happy with, 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 with the setting mm. in the sense why we have, is it three tiers? Because I don't <laughs> look at the local governments as part of, I mean, the, the, the federating units in, in that sense because they are still under the heavy weight of the governors, of, of the, of the, governors, the yeah. states. Mm. But ordinarily, when you look at the, the structures we have, it, it beats me if we are talking about restructuring. Look at the country. If you look at the history of the poli political de 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 development of, of this country, we ha we've had several constitutions in the past. All these constitutions have taken into consideration our divergent views and opinions and so many other factors. Mm -hmm. Now, before we were operating regional system. We said, no, uh, we need to give other areas also a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. We started creating states. Okay. Uh, uh, before even that, uh, Iran's government came in with a unitary government. government. People were just talking about unitary government. I mean, whatever you bring, people are bound to come, uh, make their own analysis mm -hmm. and say whether it is good or mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. Gawan created states. We started with is it 12 states, 12. then we graduated to 19 states, and today we have 36, 36. and Abuja the 37th mm -hmm. st uh, state, so to say. But we, we still have agitations. We now say, okay, let's look at the zones, political zones. We have six geopolitical zones. We're now some zones are talking about uh, they have five states while others have six, six. states. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is so. I just cannot understand what we are talking about. What do we really want? Do we want a weak center? Or what are we talking about in this? Uh, I mean, restructuring, to my mind, is such a word that you, you, you just play around it and everybody will have 
I mean, we have different perspectives. So, but talking. the whole thing is, it will still boil down to good governance. Mm. Okay. No matter what you have, no matter how you restructure this country, we, we, it will still boil down to good, good governance. governance. Without good governance, it's just like having a very a brand new vehicle, brand new state of the art, latest model of the best car you can get. But if you don't have a good driver, that car is bound to crash. So what are we talking about? Even if you don't have a battery there, it cannot operate. You cannot operate that vehicle. So there are components, necessary components. So I, I think it is such a big thing that we don't, we don't just start talking about restructuring without even understanding yes, what, talk is, right? what, what we are talking about. But it looks like a lot of people are talking about restructuring mm -hmm. without understanding the implication and the, 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 the far-reaching impact it will have on the polity. So, to my mind, if that is what is trending now and that is uh, what we, we uh, people are agitating, then for heaven's sake, let's, start, let's do it. Let's sit down. All of us should come up with positions. Uh, but I, at the end of the day, I don't know how we are going to collate all this information, all the data, it. and harmonize it, uh, and, and say, and okay, take it we, we have restructured. <laughs> so it beats me. Uh, uh, what we really because want Because people this... will ask, can we restructure yeah, without yeah, changing the constitution? Exactly. Because at the end of the day, we have representatives both in the exactly. national, I uh, mean, in the both upper and lower. And Isn't now, it their responsibility and now already we, have, we, are, we are almost through with the, uh, with constitutional, the, amendment. the, with the constitutional amendment, and certainly we are, uh, suddenly we are talking about restructuring. I am not opposed to it, but let's find out. Do we want to go back to regions? Do we want to go back? Do we want to create more states? However you look at it, whatever you do with the Nigerian arrangement as it is now, we, people are bound to still not be satisfied okay. and will still bring another thing tomorrow. Let me give you an example. I come from Taraba State. Mm. A, a single local government in Taraba State is even bigger than the whole Southeast. Yeah. So are we now saying that we, 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 we should be giving more local government, mm. or more states? Based on the there, land side. Based on land mass and also our economic, or our economic viability and potentials? All right. Uh, engineer, since you mentioned Taraba, we shall talk about Taraba politics. Well, let's take this quick break. When we come back, we will delve into Taraba politics with Engineer Ahmed Yusuf. Please remain with us. Welcome back from that break. If you are just joining us, the program is Guest of the Week. The program where we bring to you a guest that say it the way it is. And today we have somebody who has been saying it the way it is. No less a personality than engineer Ahmad Yusuf, two-time former uh, commissioner in Taraba State, finance and works. And later, gubernatorial, I mean before then, he was chairman uh, of uh, Taraba Investment and Property Limited. After then, he became chief of staff. Then in 2007, he was the gubernatorial candidate of ACN. And later, in 2011, again, and I said again, he became the gubernatorial candidate of uh, CPC. And uh, today, he's saying it as it is. Engineer, before that break, yes, we're talking about politicians cross capital. But now, let's go to Taraba State. Uh, Taraba, Taraba is almost how many years old now? And we've had, uh, I think it's about the fourth or fifth uh, mm. democratic uh, yeah. uh, I mean, governor we are having. Yes. Can we say, uh, I mean, Taraba has developed, I mean, compared to other states that were created the same time with that? 
Uh, the answer is certainly no. Okay. And uh, ironically, I participated in almost all the civilian administrations administration of Taraba State from inception, mm. except this particular administration of uh, Governor uh, Architect Darius Shaku. Mm. Uh, the reason is not far-fetched. I belong to the APC, and uh, the PDP is the ruling party, so to say, in Taraba State. And uh, I was part of the process when Taraba State was created in 1991. Okay. We were the first crop of uh, leaders, so to say, in Taraba State. I served in the Executive Council of Taraba State as Special Advisor Advisor. in Charge of Rural and Urban Development. Okay. So we started from scratch when the state was created. And uh, of course, if you look at the achievements uh, recorded by governors over, over the years, uh, I think I will score this administration very, very low. That's the present administration. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, those of us in the opposition, whatever we say will not be taken seriously because uh, we are bound to be told that, look, you are just aggrieved, you are sour losers, and that is why you are accusing uh, the current administration. But I make bold to say that some of the issues that I will raise in, in terms of what is happening now, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I say that I, uh, it's a challenge. Uh, let's, let's just look at the uh, Nyame's administration, where I served as Commissioner for Finance and later I served as Commissioner for Works. When we handed over to Governor Dambaba, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't leave any liability. Okay. We were paying salaries as and when due. We were the first state in, Tara in Nigeria to, to implement the new salary structure. Okay. And... Uh, we were paying pensions, gratuities, government was stable, and we had also, we had impacted, we have several projects in the health, health uh, especially the health, uh, the healthcare sector, rural infrastructure. At least we, d we did our best within the limited resources then. As a member of the, uh, the Federation Ac Accounts and Allocation Committee for five years, that's been Commissioner for Finance, I know how much we were getting as allocation from the Federation Account and also our internally generated revenue and also what we were getting as special grants and also VAT from the federal government. All this fell into serious insignificance with what the present administration uh, has is, been, getting. Is, is getting. With all the bailouts, all the Paris Club, all the name it, all this bailout that we've been receiving, mm -hmm. there is nothing on ground commensurate with what we have been receiving at the federa uh, from the Federation account and also by way of bailouts and uh, all these uh, uh, grants that we've been receiving. So uh, uh, I'm at sea as to what really the governor is doing. Mm. With, with, with Before we go further, mm. um, Ajira would love to ask you this, because I'm sure you are close to later uh, Damba Basente. Um, for, for some people outside, the assertion is some people play politics since from that crash up to the time Namba Basente died, can we say, can, will it be right to actually say some people play politics with the life and the, and the health of Namba Basente? Definitely people played politics with his life. Okay. It's a notorious fact. Mm. In this country, when Namba had this unfortunate accident. accident, he was flown abroad. His deputy took over as acting governor. Some of us were drafted in to, to participate in that government. But suddenly a cabal emerged having seen a situation where they were like at the verge of losing out, mm. that is in terms of ha having their grip uh, in, the, in the political power equation of Taraba State, suddenly they bundled Dambaba and brought him back. And they brought him to the government house and they started churning out releases and uh, appointments purportedly made by Dambaba, which is so sad. I make bold to say that I'm the closest person to Governor Dambaba, even however you look at it. One, he was my neighbor and friend, and also uh, we, we served in the same administration as members of the Taraba State Executive Council. As commissioners. While, uh, while he was commissioner for education, I was okay. commissioner for finance. Mm. We were friends, neighbors, name it. Uh, so, but suddenly they brought him back. And it was obvious that when they brought him back, it wasn't as if he was healthy mm. or uh, good enough to take over his office. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, they created serious bad blood amongst the populace in Taraba State as if 
uh, there was a gang up to, 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 to capture power by all means or age out Nambaba, but which wasn't so. You can now see that history has vindicated uh, some of us that participated in, in, in that administration in the sense that up to the time that he handed over, he was not even around during the handing over. Just It goes to tell you that he wasn't uh, feeling very well. And it's not even a, a, a problem. He's a normal human being. Mm -hmm. What is there? They should have allowed him to, to, to face his, uh, his, his, his situation also to help him. But they were just using him occasionally when the need arises and they will just dump him. Ironically, when he died, some of us were, that were very close to him were the ones that were at the funeral. Even though we were not recognized, but it, it, it was such a painful situation that they downplayed even his death. They belittled him even in death. They did not, as far as I'm concerned, they did not do what is expected of them. Because they, they, even Governor Nyame was there, nobody allowed him to even, to even say anything there. And those who were at the forefront of saying that people have been uh, have aged out Dambaba, people like General Tiwa Danjuma, people like Jerry Ghana, people like John Dara, they were no, nowhere to be found during his mm. funeral. Yes. I am not saying that they must be there. Yes, but at least nobody sent any anybody, any representative. Yes, I asked this question because when Dambaba Sunte was brought back uh, from overseas from his medical treatment, where he couldn't even walk, he couldn't even speak, we saw people who received him at the airport, but at his death. I mean, aside the sitting governor, we didn't see any one of them. That goes to tell you that they were playing politics with his life. Mm. It's so painful, to, especially some of us that were very, very close to him. You cannot wish away the fact that Dambaba uh, was my neighbor. I was in number six. I'm in number six. He was, he was in number eight. Okay. The, same, the same close. We served in the same administration. I practically drafted him from ANPP to PDP. This is to my eternal credit, and this is something that he has acknowledged, mm. the role I have played, or the role that we have played in propping up each other in, 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 in Taraba state politics in particular. But all these things were, were dispensed with, and they changed the whole narrative, mm. and we became like enemies, and people were looking at us as if we were usurpers or interlopers in that, in that administration. administration. But history has vindicated us today yes now, now I, i'll ask you this question again because you've been an insider you are an insider was it true that we saw the current i mean we saw the current minister of women affairs uh, senator aisha jumai hassan oppose the nomination of uh, the former minister of water resources as uh, coming back uh, what's the name i've forgotten the uh, name obadiah andu, obadiah andu. Yes. Uh, is it true that dambaba also oppose uh, uh, the current governor, Darius, from the minister. Very well, okay. very well. Okay. Like the lawyers would say, it's a notorious fact that okay. he opposed that. Okay. And it, this is something that is personally known to me. Mm -hmm. So nobody will change that history and say that Ambaba supported Darius as, uh, as a minister. Okay. Unless if they want to be economical with the truth. Okay. This I can say I, with all sense of authority that Ambaba opposed uh, the Darius. nomination of Darius Ishako as minister. Mm -hmm. Because this is something that I discussed with him. So I know. Okay. So I'm, I'm talking from a position of strength. Well, eventually we saw him scale through. Yeah, he scaled through because, of course, we, that brings us to the issue of godfatherism that we are talking about in this country. Mm. Beca he, because of uh, the closeness of General Tiwa Danjuma to uh, Good President Goodluck Jonathan. Jonathan. Okay. No more, no less. And the same people that were anti Dambaba, suddenly they became pro Dambaba when, when he had that accident because it was convenient for them to hijack the political process then so that they could slot in their candidate. But it, they did it not because they really wanted Dambaba or because they, 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 they thought Dambaba was a good man, mm. but rather they saw an opportunity and, and they capitalized on it and, and just uh, went in. That is, that is how, they, how they came in. They are just usurpers. Hmm. Could this be the reason why even the senator that was sacked? I mean, I mean, could be one of one of the reasons that he didn't actually win an election. Well, that's uh, another issue altogether because uh, by the time they started all these shenanigans, I had left because okay. I, I I just just uh, I just place. left the the, the party uh, for for APC even okay. well before even the gubernatorial elections, elections because there was no internal democracy. It is also let me still borrow that word. It is also a notorious fact that. Uh, Governor Ishaku's nomination took place in Abuja, yeah. contrary to, to all the constitutional provisions of the PDP. And it is the only nomination that took place that was held in Abuja outside the capital of 
its own state. I, I, I challenge anybody to tell me that that nomination took place in Taraba State. It never took place in Taraba State because they skewed the whole process in such a way that they will give him that advantage. And today, that is why we are saddled with this disastrous outing that we are seeing. Hmm. Talking about disastrous outing, that brings us to the recent uh, development that happened on the Mambila Plateau. Now, people are, are crying, I mean, talking about ranching, 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 I mean, without knowing some of the facts, like we all know. But we saw that most of those people who were victims of that attack in Taraba were people who don't even move anywhere, yet they were attacked. What can you actually say about that unfortunate incident. You see, uh, you know, when you make laws in this country mm. with a view to targeting particular set of people, mm. you will miss the point. You okay. will always you miss feel the, point. the law is targeting some yes. people. They, they, they just, I may be wrong. This okay. is just my personal opinion. So I'm not generalizing. Okay. Personally, I, I think the law, that is the, the zero grazing mm. law, or whatever they call it in yes. the rubber state, is skewed like to deal with the Fulanese, so to say. Uh, unfortunately, they, they, they are under the erroneous belief that it's only Fulanese that are cattle yeah, owners or uh, uh, ranchers. Oh, it's, it's not the exclusive preserve of the Fulanese. Okay. A lot of people from other ethnic nationalities also engage in, in, in grazing. And I mean, I mean they, they, they are also uh, I mean, herders. Uh, so I, 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 I am, I mean, lost as to why uh, but the general impression is like it is an anti fulani law. Mm. So that, and it, it, you can now see when uh, the fight broke, broke out on the Mambila Plateau, it was the Fulanis that were targeted. So, however you look at it, the Fulanis will definitely, are definitely the common denominator in that, in that whole setting. The, because, but when you make laws, for mm. heaven's sake, I am Fulani. I operate zero grazing. I have my own cattle. I, I have my own ranch. I, I operate zero grazing we, long before even the law. Okay. I, I operate zero grazing. So you don't need even, it is not even in our interest. Now, allow the Fulanis also to even understand the whole process. Mm. But when you come with a law, because you, you come with a very malicious and vexatious law that will just, like, you want to settle scores, with particular ethnic group, mm. then that is why you will miss the point. The whole law, the whole law, this grazing, anti-grazing, grazing, open grazing, grazing bill, law. open grazing bill, is, is just very malicious, is targeted at, is, is an anti-people law, and this is something that shouldn't be allowed to even to, to even uh, see the light of the day. But unfortunately, we are saddled with that, uh, with, 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 that be, uh, with, with that with that law. Mm. So there are laws that are not, they are anti-people. Okay. They are anti-people. Even the workability and the implementation, this is, you, you find it very difficult even to implement because if you go through the details of, the, of this bill, you would, have, you would see so many loopholes. Mm. The, the, the whole thing, the, the whole essence is just to say, oh yeah, we have dealt with the Fulanese now. So that's, I'm not, I'm, I'm not speaking because really I'm Fulani, but it's, it's, it, should have been, it would have been any other ethnic group, I would still have spoken in the same yes, way I have spoken. Well, Engineer, we hope we found a way around that. But then, uh, this discussion cannot end without me asking you about the uh, Mambilla Dam project. But before we go into that, of course, let's talk politics a bit. We saw, of reason, uh, Senator Aisha Jumai Al Hassan, I mean, talked about her support for Atiku come 2019. And that brought up so many, true up so many issues. You belong to the same political party. I mean, what is your take on that statement and the reactions that followed? Yes, this is a, a topic that, uh, I mean, uh, has been, that has refused to go. Mm. And uh, for, for so many reasons, uh, I would rather restrict myself to the fact that, uh, uh, why not for the fact that, uh, Aisha is a minister in uh, Buhari's administration, mm. I think. It, there is no problem with that statement. Okay. Because even uh, the APC itself is a conglomeration of a lot of, uh, I mean, I mean uh, if you look at the history of the, the political evolution of the APC, mm. people came from different backgrounds. Mm. You have Konkoso, you have uh, Sam Da Isaiah, you have Roshas, you have uh, Atiku, you have uh, Mr. President himself. Mm. These are people that came from different backgrounds. They have their people, they have their supporters. Mm -hmm. So what is that if somebody is supporting Mr. A or Mr. B? Mm -hmm. But 
the, the, the contradiction here is if you are serving in a particular cabinet, it is not even morally, I mean, I mean there is no moral justification in making uh, so such a statement. statement. Other than that, I, I, I think it is, the, uh, the Constitution has allowed that mm -hmm. freedom of expression, freedom of association, freedom of so many things. So it's a fundamental, <laughs> it's a funda fundamental right. But there are certain rights that if, I mean, I mean, much as you have those rights, you want to exercise them. But if in the course of exercising those rights, it mm -hmm. will do more harm than good. So the best thing is not to even do it. So I think that, and now that she has apologized to the party, I don't, I, I think we just it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, it shouldn't not be right. an issue. Uh, engineer, for over 40 years, Mambila Dam project <laughs> was in the pipelines, but all of a sudden we saw it very rigid. I mean, People are saying if you have that, considering what the Mambela Plateau is, I mean, it's going to be entirely a game changer. What is your take on that? Very well, it's going to be a, a game changer mm. in the sense that uh, if you look at the power situation in this country, mm. we're still uh, operating below expectation. And uh, by the time this project is through, we would have also increased the, the, the power uh, capacity by uh, almost 4,000 megawatts. Mm. So 4,000 megawatts is not, uh, by any means, is, 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 is a huge, mm. uh, will have a huge impact mm. in, in the power sector. Mm. And if you look at uh, the lack of political will from the previous administrations in okay. pursuing to its logical conclusion the Mambila uh, hydroelectricity project, uh, project uh, uh, I, I must say we have every cause to thank President Muhammadu Buhari okay. for because he, he promised that even when he was During a campaigns. presidential candidate of CPC, I okay. remember when he was in Taraba State, he talked about that. Okay. And uh, even as APC candidate and uh, pre uh, eventually president, he made sure that at least this one of the campaign promises he made, and he has uh, made good his promise okay. by uh, pursuing it to its logical conclusion. And I, mo I, I, I must say that uh, coming from Taraba, I can tell you confidently that uh, work is on progress now as I'm talking to you, All right. work is on progress at the site. Okay. So it's not as if it's just an empty political talk. Okay. So we are, we are very happy and uh, uh, with this, I, I think Mr. President has really justified uh, uh, that position and he has discharged his promise and I'm, I'm very, very happy uh, about that and we are also very proud that we are part of this. Uh, development, especially members of the APC family. All right. Look, I mean, engineer, what would be your advice? Uh, we don't know if you are going to run for president. <laughs> no, <laughs> or, or so what have you? Yeah. 2019 is around the corner. What would be your advice to the electorate in a minute? Uh, my advice to the electorate is uh, we have to look at uh, those who want to, who, those who present themselves forward to, to for various elective positions. We have to okay. look at their capacity. Okay. We have to look at their passion. Uh, are they really for the masses or they are just for themselves? Mm. Because it is very, very important to, to demarcate, to have, and it is not uh, very difficult for, for, for the electorate to be in a position to, to, to make such judgments. Okay. So judgment is very, very important. Okay. Let's separate those who, are, who we think are going to work for the general well-being of, uh, of the country and those who are just out there for just their pockets and maybe their families. So I, I think we should be much more discerning than ever before in looking at our leaders, assessing them so that we will make the right choice. All right. Engineer Ahmed Yusuf, I mean, two-time commissioner in Taraba State, two-time gubernatorial aspirant, former chief of staff, and so many other former this, former that. Thank you very much for being our guest today. It's this pleasure. Program. Thank you for having me. Thank you. There you are. That is the size of the program today. Join us another time when we shall bring to you another interesting guest who will say it as it is, hoping that you have a nice day ahead. Thank you for investing your time with us.